This is Cam Perrin, a kid from Boston who grew up collecting baseball cards. Every time I was in Walgreens, I'd pick up a pack. After more than a decade of picking up cards and collecting signatures, he built up a pretty big collection. So this is your room. Yes, as you can see, there's very little on display. Yeah, I expected to come in and see like tons of no, like... No, it's a, it's, a, it's a hidden museum. Now hidden away in a closet in his childhood bedroom to shield it from damaging light is part of that collection that's helped shed a light on one of the most hidden times in baseball. There was very little coverage during that era. An era when African Americans were not accepted into the major or minor leagues because of the color of their skin. So they created Negro League Baseball, professional teams mostly made up of African Americans. These guys almost just played and then their careers just vanished. I saw them as these underdogs, these guys that weren't really recognized at all. And that really just drew me towards it. So Cam traded in his major league cards and began focusing on bringing Negro League Baseball back to life. Started trying to find as many Negro League player addresses as I could and wrote to like 100, 150 players and then just start picking up the phone and calling numbers. How did that go? How did how'd the phone calls go? You either call and it's a wrong number, the phone number has been disconnected. Sometimes you'd call and the person had passed away and you were too late to the game. I'd rather just pay. But just like the game, although you might strike out again and again and again, Cam wasn't giving up. That would be a find. Sometimes you'd call and the guy would pick up and you'd still be on the phone two hours later. Boy, he had some big hands. Guys like Gil Hernandez Black, a former Negro leaguer who played for the Indianapolis Clowns in the 1950s. I get a phone call, are you Gil Black? This is Cam. And that's how I got to know Cam. And Cam got to know Gil. The 83-year-old dreamed of making it to the bigs and had the talent to back it up, signing with the Braves right out of high school. But that dream didn't last long because of segregation laws, which kept blacks separate. I never had any doubt that I could play Major League Baseball, but I have to play the hand as dealt you. Experiencing racial segregation both on and off the field. You get to spring training and the barracks that we stayed in the white players stayed inside the building and the black players had to sleep on the porch. And I'm there day after day after day and I'm not doing nothing. They finally set me up to pitch. I pitched two innings, I gave up no hits, and then that's all the ball I played in spring training. So after a short stint in the minors, Gill found a spot with Negro League Baseball, like many African American players did during that time creating fond memories on the field that long faded away. None of them had really stayed in touch with any of their former teammates. None of them had any articles or documents or photos, really anything that tied them to their career. And none of them had ever been recognized for their careers. He started making baseball cards for them and even helped organize an annual reunion for former players in Birmingham, Alabama. And there was uh, Reginald Howard, Hey, Gil. And as I remember it, you stood outside the hotel for an hour with your bag in your hand and you still didn't go inside because you hadn't seen him in 50-something years. Right. But for Cam, it was about making new connections. What's that relationship like, the, the relationships that you formed with some of these guys over the years? You know, I got a lot of grandfathers. I got a lot of grandfathers. But I'm also, I guess, like an agent as well, where I like help them get different opportunities like helping them collect their pensions, money offered by Major League Baseball to former players who played at least four years in the league. Yeah, so he played on the Indianapolis Clowns. The only catch, you have to prove it. A task easier said than done. I mean, I looked for hours and hours to try to find some of these articles and slowly we would just check off one year. And those articles mm -hmm. were the key decision maker in getting a pension or not. So when I'd find the fourth year, and that could mean a really big check for somebody. This is actually really cool. Only a handful of former Negro League players receive a pension from Major League Baseball. Help us to live comfortably in our golden years by enclosing a donation when making your autograph request. I wish he dated this because I got this guy a pension. You did? Yeah. yeah. How does it make you feel to know that you've been able to help these guys? For the most part, as a black athlete in the 40s, 50s, and early 60s, after your baseball career, there weren't many options at that time, unfortunately. So a check for that amount of money, it really makes a big difference for them. 
And now that young kid from Boston who grew up collecting baseball cards has turned into a researcher and advocate for these former players. Was there a point where you're like, all right, this is this is more than just like a hobby for me, like this is... Yeah, it's not a hobby. It's not a hobby. I call it like my passion project. It's just like a life project that doesn't really have an end in sight. It's something I'm always going to be doing. It's just become like a big part of my life. Emily Reppert, Channel One News.